Apple's MacBook Pros have proven to be one of the most premium laptops in the industry, but how does the 2016 MacBook Pro fare with a generational Windows user? Let's find out! So what's up guys, now I've had a decent amount of time with this 2016 MacBook Pro and I feel like now is a perfect time for me to do an official review of what I think about this product. So I've had this guy for about a month now and I've learned a lot from it. And if you guys saw my previous video where I actually unboxed this thing and gave my initial thoughts on it, I was actually a Windows user before I ever bought this Mac. I've had the Windows laptop for my whole life. Every time I buy a laptop, it's a Windows laptop and I was absolutely in love. I feel like every time I buy a Windows laptop, there's always some kind of problem with it. And finally I was just like, I was fed up and I decided to buy this MacBook Pro because I knew the likelihood of another problem happening, especially with Apple, it was very slim. And that's what pretty much ultimately decided for me to buy this laptop. Now let's get a closer look of this guy. So I ended up buying a case for this laptop because it was such an expensive laptop, it was important for me to never let anything happen to this guy. And so I definitely pulled the plug on that. And as you, as you can tell, it doesn't really add too much depth to it. It's very slim and it doesn't add much weight at all. It was definitely worth buying this case. Now obviously this case wasn't really meant for the one without the touch bar because there is no USB-C's here so it's a little bit of a space but that is not a problem at all. Because there's so much to talk about in this video, I'm going to split it up into two parts. The pros being whatever I think was the best part of me moving from a Windows laptop to this Mac and then the cons, the worst parts of me moving from a Windows laptop to the Mac. So let's start with the pros. So the first pro is going to be the portability factor. Now I used to have a 15.6 laptop that was a Dell Inspiron 15 5000 series and it was pretty bulky. Now this thing is ridiculously light even with the case on it and it makes things so much easier for me whenever I go to like class or something and just carrying this around it's just like so light, it's nice. The second pro is going to go along the lines of the portability pro and that is actually going to be the build. The build is absolutely phenomenal and anytime you really buy a Mac usually you're getting the most premium products in the market because of the fact you are spending a lot of money and even opening this guy up it just feels nice. The experience is perfect and even the metal that's on these uh, laptops are pretty comfortable especially this trackpad like it's just a perfect build for my liking and I haven't ha really had any problems because of the size of the trackpad or how far away the uh, keys are or how close they are it just makes things a lot smoother and even the keyboard like even though they're a little bit bigger the keys are uh, and closer together it just feels a lot smoother anytime you type and it makes you feel like you're typing even faster along with the speakers the speaker grills are loud and they're very uh, clear as well and the third pro is probably my favorite and it is the gestures the gestures are probably really efficient because of the fact that the trackpad is so huge it kind of helps your fingers like adjust to the size easier and to allow for movement faster like especially like one of the gestures that pinches out and it allows you to open up the desktop uh, pinch back to bring it back or go to the size three finger slide to go to the da dashboard and then three finger slide to bring it back so if you have multiple windows it's really easy for you to uh, go through the windows at a faster pace because you're not having to like move the mouse at all all you have to do is like three finger up to bring up all the windows that are open or three fingers down for that specific uh, browser or window that's open and so those are probably my favorite gestures and it helps productivity at its max for sure and the fourth pro is going to be the battery now a lot of people have said it's a huge controversy because of the fact that a lot of times the battery is a very accurate and an accurate representation of how much battery is actually left on your laptop and for me um, it hasn't really been a problem maybe that's because I have the one without the touch bar I know the touch bar has a smaller battery and it has a lot more problems with it because of the touch bar but uh, I'm actually a big fan of the battery because it lasts me probably about seven to eight hours or just like watching videos and maybe even more uh, if I'm just just browsing the internet and that's not a big deal for me if I'm not getting the 10 hours of battery life because for me I used to have only like four or five hours of battery life max if I'm like doing very light stuff on my Windows laptops uh, but now obviously like eight hours is a lot more than I need uh, and the charge is ridiculously fast too and uh, recently they actually updated so like they don't tell you the percentage and the time left on the battery I mean they tell you the percentage but not the time left 
uh, and so because of the inaccuracies with the battery but overall I definitely think the battery is huge for me and it's very very beneficial. Now on to the cons. The first pro is going to be something I find pretty annoying and it's the functionality. Uh, specifically with like the browsers and like this button that I'm used to like usually makes this window size like larger and bigger uh, but in here it just makes the entire window go full screen which is not what I want I just want it to go like from top end right here to bottom end and in order to do that I feel like I don't know if there's a shortcut I haven't learned it yet but you have to like drag it all the way to the corner and then get the bottom part and then drag that all the way to the bottom and it's, I find that really annoying uh, and especially the fact that I loved a lot of the Windows features where all you had to do is like double tap the top to like get it to fit the entire screen or even just slide it to the left or right to get it to uh, half screen and that was really helpful for me but that's kind of annoying for me uh, as a Windows user to have to go all the way to the corner and drag it down but I guess that's kind of like a minor thing that's just something I'm used to now the second con is probably going to be the biggest difference between what a um, laptop that has Windows on it versus a laptop that runs iOS like this one and it's gonna be the fact that it's not compatible for the most part and specifically as a college student that's like learning computer science and engineering and there has been a few times where I wasn't able to download a certain application or program that only runs on Windows so that was kind of annoying made me actually have to pretty much end up getting boot camp on my computer and uh, getting that Windows 10 as well so that's probably the solution to that problem I have and the final and probably most annoying con I have today is dongles. Look at all these dongles, man. I obviously don't have all of them. I just have a few that I really feel like I need the most because since the MacBook only has USB-C, I need to buy a few dongles to actually like use uh, certain things I use every single day, like this USB 3.0 to micro, or sorry, to USB-C, and then this SD card reader that goes into a USB that, or you can also go to a micro USB, then goes to the laptop. And so pretty much I put these together, and then I plug it in, and I put the SD card in, and it's just like ridiculous. And I also have this micro USB to USB-C for my phone, because I have a Galaxy S7 Edge, and so it just makes things more complicated, and it's kind of annoying, like really, but I guess it is the future, so there's not much you can do about it, and so uh, you just gotta adapt, spend a lot more money than you need, but whatever, it is what it is. Alright, so there you have it. That is my 2016 MacBook Pro review. Since I had a month with it, I was able to actually do a lot more and find out a lot of things I liked and disliked, and I split it up into the pros and cons. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you guys in the next one. Peace.